Now, from the area's leader in live local news, this is WYLN News, the area's number one source of live local news and information in Luzerne, Schuylkill, Carbon, and Columbia counties. WYLN News starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us on WILN News. I'm Paula Dagnan. Sugarloaf Township Police are investigating reports of mail theft in their area. Several people have told police of mail being removed from outdoor mail drop boxes. That's according to the police post on their Facebook page. Also, they say some checks have been taken and cashed under multiple aliases. Police are advising you to check your bank statements and if you do have any information, to contact them. A Wilkes-Barre area school board member says he will not resign over a comment that he posted on social media. When the article was shared on the Wilkes-Barre area Save Our Schools page, board member Ned Evans' remark quickly made calls for his resignation and removal. The story involved a case out of the area involving a teacher and a 13-year-old student having a sexual relationship. He apologized for the comment he posted and, despite others saying he should resign, including the superintendent of the district, he says he's staying. More local fire chiefs are weighing in on the outcome of the first holiday with the new state fireworks law. They're suggesting some changes. And if they can't happen on a state level, they're working to make changes in their own areas. Wilkes-Barre Fire Chief Jay Delaney planning to ask City Council to pass a fireworks ordinance that would make it illegal to light off the consumer-grade aerial fireworks within city limits. Wilkes-Barre Council meets tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. Meanwhile, Hazelton's Fire Chief Donald Leshko also expressed his concerns that after battling several fires that are still under investigation in his city. At tonight's Hazelton City Council meeting, the board will consider regulating yard sales within the city. Council members discussed regulating yard sales. Mayor Jeff Cassatt said he will reintroduce a proposal that would limit households to holding up to five yard sales within a 12-month period. It would also require residents to secure permits for each sale. The mayor said permits are free for the first three sales, but then would cost $5 each for a fourth or fifth sale. Mayor Cassatt said the ordinance is intended to address complaints about people who are blocking sidewalks or essentially running businesses in yards or in front of their homes. Council will also talk about a moving permit for people moving into the city. They would have to pay $10 for that permit. That meeting, 6 o'clock tonight. McAdoo Council held their monthly meeting last night. The mayor spoke on recent firework activity, reminding residents of the ordinance and to think about their neighbors. Future road work was also discussed at their last work session. The proposal to get a grant for road work had to be in by July 1st, and we had ours in. Ours was one of the earliest ones in. Now, from what I understand, we won't really know until November whether or not our proposal was accepted. So road work probably won't begin until ne early next year. McAdoo's next meeting will take place August 14th at 7 p.m. The state auditor general made recommendations after audits were conducted on two state programs. Our Julie Stefanovich has more. The Pennsylvania Auditor General's Office has released a 90-page report on findings of recent audits on two programs that were created to help low-income families heat and weatherize their homes in the winter months. Auditor General Eugene De Pasquale found that LIHEAP, the Low Income Energy Assistance Program administered by the Department of Human Services, fared well. De Pasquale made just a few recommendations for the program. For LIHEAP, we had three recommendations, um, but again, I want to stress that they are doing everything they can to try to make this program even better. Um, but some of the things that we do call for them to look for are determination of household size and composition, verification of social security numbers, identification of potential multiple cash payments to the same individual or the same address, i.e. household, and cancellation of payments. 
The report did, however, find continued problems with the Department of Community and Economic Development, which administers the Weatherization Assistance Program. DCED failed to spend $5.4 million of federal funding over a four-year period. The reason why this matters is that $4.74 million of that money could have been spent on weather, weatherizing an estimated 527 homes instead of going back to the federal government. A DCD offered all local agencies additional funding instead of just three. I believe, and it is clearly possible, that more of the money, in fact close to all of it, could have been used to keep low-income Pennsylvanians warmer and safer during those winter months. One of DePasquale's recommendations is that the governor and the General Assembly enact legislation requiring that any available federal funding be released by state agencies by the end of the budget year. Reporting for WYLN News, I'm Julie Stefanovich. And coming up on WYLN News, some glitches holding up a new website. Plus, one business is expanding. Our Julia Wiegand has that story. But first, let's take a look at our seven-day forecast. Nothing like those pictures in Julie's story there. Partly cloudy with an overnight low tonight, 54. Sunny and 81 tomorrow. Partly cloudy and 84 for Friday. We'll be right back. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50% on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and train comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Appliances are right over there, and this is part of our furniture department. Okay, but I'm looking for a mattress. Well, you've come to the right place. Grand Central is Northeast Pennsylvania's number one Sealy mattress dealer. We have Sealy mattress sets from only $199 and Stearns and Foster Queen sets from only $45 per month. We also have interest-free financing up to 60 months. And remember, delivery and takeaway are absolutely free. So we don't have to do anything? Not if you buy your Sealy mattress at Grand Central. It looks like I did find the right place to buy a Sealy mattress. Grand Central and Hazleton. The right all Care Home Care, providing quality in home care since 1986. Call and see how their team of licensed physical therapists, skilled nurses, speech, and occupational therapists can provide you with exceptional service in the comfort of your own home. They also offer dietitian, home health aid, and medical social worker services. You have a choice in your health care. For safe, friendly, qualified care, call All Care Home Care today and let their team begin taking care of you and your loved ones. Customers who use the Luzerne County Transportation Authority will have their chance to weigh in on concerns at an upcoming forum. Representatives from LCTA will be hosting the forum Tuesday, July 17th, 2.15 p.m. at the Rose Tucker Active Adult Center, 145 East Green Street, Nanticoke. Information will be presented on shared ride van services and bus passes for citizens 65 and older. The goal to find what you want in three clicks. But now you have to wait a little bit longer before you can check it out. That's because the new Luzerne County website was supposed to go live early this morning. But county officials say some technical glitches are holding it up. They were expecting a start this afternoon. County Manager David Pedry says the site will have the answers to many questions and make it easier and faster for you to find them. Primerica branching out into Frackville. WYLN's Julia Wiegand has the details. Primerica recently renovated and moved an office into Frackville, which will be opening soon. The corporation generally targets middle-income consumers with household incomes between $30,000 and $100,000 per year. Primerica's mission is to help families become properly protected, debt-free, financially independent, and educated on how to make more income. So we offer the opportunity for people to come aboard, you know, part-time with our company, you know, make some extra money, make ends meet, really learn about money and finance because unfortunately today no one's, you know, we're not educated about how money works. We kind of just spend it, you know, and uh, 
Uh, most people don't plan to fail, they fail to plan. So that's our mission at Primerica really is to, to, get, to be able to take Wall Street to Main Street. Before becoming regional vice president of Primerica, Sean Cantwell had the background of delivering pizza and running a bar. He found that nobody would talk with him when he became interested in educating himself about money. Now, he's able to follow his passion by teaching others how to become entrepreneurs and open their own office for the largest independent financial services marketing organization in North America. One big thing is that uh, this company teaches leadership, which I think is absent. You know, it's, it's not as prevalent as it should be in t you know, today's society. You know, we, we bring in people, we truly bring them into our company, and we're able to mentor them into the financial service industry, which is a very great career path for, you know, anyone actually at any age to get into, you know, to, to, because we all need money, you know. Unfortunately, our paychecks don't come with instructions. So it's not the money we make, it's the impact and, and exchange that we can make on, you know, middle class families. At the end of last year, Primerica insured about 5 million lives and had over 2 million client investment accounts. Their Frackville office is located at 25 South Lehigh Avenue. Reporting from Frackville for WYLN News, I'm Julia Wiegand. Coming up on West Nanticoke's News Choice, smiling faces in community and you, plus a visit to Hillside SPCA. But first, let's take a look at today's winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played. Stay with us. Hi, I had a very minor uh, fender bender tonight in an unreasonably narrow fast food drive through lane. Don't worry, I have everything handled. I already spoke to our Allstate agent, and I know that we have accident forgiveness, which is so smart on your guys' part. Like, the fact that they'll Four just... weeks without the car. Okay, yep, good night. With accident forgiveness, your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Switching to Allstate is worth it. Visit your local Allstate agent, the McNeilis Agency in Hazleton at 1092 North Church Street, or in hometown in the hometown village square. Pocono Raceway is summertime, where the whole crew's invited, where fans become friends, where good times roll, and the racing is always a little tricky. Bring your friends, bring your family, just bring it, Pocono style. Grand Central wants to send you to the Tricky Triangle. Grand Central, everything for your home as four tickets for one lucky winner for the Gander Outdoors 400, July 29th. Entry is easy, just visit Grand Central at either of their locations at Vine Street in Hazleton or the Laurel Mall. Fill out the entry blank and place it inside the Grand Central contest box. No purchase necessary, one entry per person. Winner will be announced on WYLN News Thursday before race weekend. Welcome to Community and You, and today we are going to talk about making someone happy, making a lot of people happy, because enough people are definitely not happy in this world. Would yeah. you agree, ladies? Yes. yes. I think that's absolutely correct. With me is Miss Fabergé of Fabergé Follies, mm -hmm. who has been making people happy now for, oh, months and months and yeah. months. Yes. And she brought one of the people who is making her happy, <laughs> and this is Dr. Melissa DeBello. And Dr. DeBello, being a sponsor of this is wonderful. Yes. Why did you decide to get involved? Yeah, so I actually um, dance with Miss Fabergé, <gasps> and I also was willing to help sponsor because my grandmother is in a nursing home, and I know that she's always looking for entertainment um, and help, helps her with her dementia and keeping her, you know, in the know. And so I really appreciate that Miss Fabergé is doing this. So I'm very excited that pretty soon we'll actually be down where my grandmother's at in Fritzinger Town. Now, you are a sponsor, but it's not Dr. DeBello that's a sponsor. Who's sponsoring? Yeah, so it's actually Hazleton Eye Specialist. So we're located on the Beltway. And, you know, the great thing about our location is we see you know, six months old to 102. So um, the people that we're actually making happy are some of our patients, actually. Oh, how nice. Yes. 
Now, you have, we've been talking about this now several times mm -hmm. here on Community and You, and we have talked about the fact of getting people involved and not just being on stage. Absolutely. We need, we have to do many things. We have to make gifts, gifts for the residents. I always need help. I need hostesses. You get to dress up in your nice dress or your nice suit and welcome everyone to the show. I need people to help with the cast and uh, stage production. So anyone who would like to help is welcome. I will find a way to use your talents. Well, see now, I didn't realize that you were one of Miss Fabergé's dancers. Yes. Oh, you should have brought your costume today <laughs> and we could have had a little bit of show and tell too. <laughs> Uh, but one of the talents that you have is just the talent of wanting to get involved by being a sponsor. Yeah. And that's wonderful. Thank you. Now, you talked about your, your grandma, yes. who's uh, at one of the, the nursing homes. Mm -hmm. When you talked to her and you mentioned something like this to her, what was her reaction? So she was really excited because um, when I was younger, she used to see me in my dance recitals. Ah. And so she's always loved going to those kind of shows. And now she can't really get out really? Um, of the nursing home as easily. So it's nice that we're going to bring that to her directly. So she's really excited. That is wonderful. Yeah. Now someone um, like Dr. DeBello who isn't directly involved mm -hmm. but being a sponsor this gives you the opportunity to do what for the residents? To uh, buy gifts because we don't like to go empty-handed everyone likes to get a gift and everyone likes it better when they get more than one <laughs> <laughs> so our our goal is to go that day and make the people happy but also to give them gifts and mementos so that for instance if we have a little gift and they have it on their counter when they look at that for the next weeks and months to come it reminds them and brings back that feeling of happiness and I think that's so very important and there's no way around that things cost money mm. and I'd like to keep this program up and running forever so a little bit of help from the business community or even individuals we don't really it's not really that much just a modest sponsorship goes a long way and it's not only Dr. DeBello no, nope, no, not just me. <laughs> no, we've had so far. We started off with Wood Forest Bank, uh, and then now our we're having an upcoming sponsor will be Lagoon Bridal Paradise. Ooh. And the standard speaker was so nice and got. Uh, we had nice publicity in the newspaper, mm -hmm. and we're hoping that uh, some other businesses will see this show, and we're going to get the word out as best we can, and maybe people will volunteer to sponsor. All right. Now, if they would like to do that, of course, you have your Facebook page, which is? Um, my Facebook page is Fabergé Follies right. and on then the you, Facebook page. And you have a phone number. I have a phone number. My phone number is 570-401-3388. Uh, my website is out there, FabergéFollies.biz. It's pretty easy to find me. <laughs> and how about Hazel Tanai Associates? Do you have uh, maybe something in the window so that if anybody comes in, they can say, hey, I want to talk to that Dr. DeBello <laughs> and see if she can give me some information? Sure. Um, we don't have anything in the window yet, but that's an idea, <laughs> certainly. Um, I would like to promote the next show um, at our office, um, so I will make sure we do that. Um, but yeah, so at our office, um, certainly if someone was to come in and ask me, I always am in the know because I'm always around the studio with Miss Fabergé, so she keeps me. And where's the office again? We are on the Beltway, so 281 Airport Road in Hazleton. All right, and ask, ask for Dr. DeBello. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. That sounds wonderful. Can't wait. Yes. And again, if you have any questions, concerns, you'd like to find out a little bit more, make sure that you tune in here and watch Community and You. You never know where Miss <laughs> mm -hmm. Fabergé is going to be, and you can always find Dr. DeBello in her office on the Airport Beltway. We hope that you will join us again soon on Community and You. Serve the Lord Singing for Joy, the CD by the Sisters of Holy Annunciation Monastery can be yours for just $13, which includes shipping and tax. Mail a check to Holy Annunciation Monastery, 430 West County Road in Sugarloaf, Pennsylvania, or call 570-788-1205. 
This 10 song CD can be yours for just $13. Chura's Auto Sales has been serving the area with quality vehicles since 1954. Chura's Auto Sales is known as your friendly dealer and now in their fourth generation and voted the best used car dealer by the readers of Standard Speaker Choice Awards. John Chura would like to thank everyone that voted for his business. When you need a quality pre-owned vehicle, choose from a large selection at Chura's 570-454-7229. SPCA has a great uh, team of volunteers and a lot of staff people also go out and regularly do fundraising um, because this is a nonprofit shelter and um, we solely exist on the donations and generosity of people so yes we do have to fundraise. Um, the uh, uh, recently the Pottsville Lions Club has um, you know, joined forces for us, which is fantastic because we really need community involvement. We are a community organization and it's wonderful to have the Pottsville Lions uh, come out and want to support the shelter, um, another community environment. And uh, what they've done this year is they've, uh, they've created like a Christmas in July um, donation uh, boxes throughout uh, several different businesses. And uh, they're soliciting for um, items for the shelter, such as, you know, of course, food products, cleaning products. Uh, uh, but some of the things that people don't rec realize that we need are like Pepsid. Pepsid is something that the, the dogs utilize when they have an upset belly. Um, so we give them things like that. As far as uh, fundraising, um, it's an ongoing process, and it has to be because, like I said, um, we are, it's a nonprofit group, so solely exists on the generosity of, of people. And gratefully and thankfully, we, we have an abundance of people that really support the shelter, which is how Hillside is still here. And that's a tribute to basically Barbara, the manager. She's kept this place going for 33 years, and she is a kind, wonderful person, and the public loves her. We did make the statement that it takes a village, um, and to have community groups supporting one another, especially in a small community like ours, is, is wonderful. Uh, it, that's what community is really built on and, and community is all about, is helping one another, and, and we're very fortunate here that we do have other community groups that are willing to um, spend time with us and support us, such as the Pottsville Lions is the most recent that is, has reached out to the shelter and is doing that drive in Christmas, or Christmas in July, so that's great. Pottsville police are fantastic, very supportive of animal issues. Um, readily call us to, to come out and help and vice versa. If we need their help, they're always ready to go. Um, received a phone call about three o'clock in the morning to which I didn't get to pick it up until five o'clock, but um, there was a, a domestic disturbance at a home and um, they wanted us to go out because there was an injured dog that was reported that allegedly the person, the owner in the house, slammed a dog to the ground and then slammed it on concrete and the dog was injured. So we met the cat manager Becky Moyer and I, we went out early that morning with the police and um, got to the residence and we found Lulu with her leg dangling and there are, was a litter of seven puppies and a mother. Um, the owner signed them both over, uh, the litter and the, uh, the mama and of course the injured dog because she needed immediate medical care to which we took her right away. So yes, the puppies are here. Um, one puppy died, sadly, um, but she is here. She is un very under socialized dogs. There were two other dogs that were brought in from there as well. Um, 
most of the dogs are under socialized and that's where the patience and the quiet and just letting the dogs you know calm on them on on their own and letting them come to you that's where it's important I'm grateful to the community at large because there's been, really been a nice outpouring for Lulu and uh, you know other animals that have come in. Sadly, what has happened um, over the past month, the shelter has been hit with several huge medical um, do uh, issues that dogs that have come in, um, close to ten thousand dollars in less than a month for medical bills. So again, donations to the Joe and Caroline uh, Medical Fund is would be greatly appreciated because $10,000 for a community shelter is a lot to shell out at any time, let alone in that short amount of time. So donations would definitely be, you know, appreciated. Over 120 golfers hit the greens this past weekend, all to help children with cancer and other chronic illnesses. The Palermo Heart to Heart Foundation holding its 28th annual golf tournament on Saturday at the Sugarloaf Golf Club. Proceeds from the fundraiser used for the Beads of Courage program, which helps children commemorate achievements while undergoing treatment. The winners of the tournament are there on your screen. The Beads of Courage program has now grown to be a standard of care in 240 hospitals in eight countries. If you'd like more information, visit beadsofcourage.org. Stay with us. A look at today's weather is next here on WYLN News. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road, Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields.
You're watching Monterey City's Choice for news, weather, and live local sports. WYLN, we're your local network.